If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before moving on. Well, notice in the way that the figure is drawn initially that the switch is initially open. And in that situation, the resistor R2 will not actually be part of the circuit. The only resistors that will be part of the circuit are the ones that lie along the outer path because that is the only path that is unbroken and continuous. So actually we can simplify the circuit when the switch is in the open position. So after drawing that, we can see that the remaining resistors, which are labeled R1 and R2, R3, are in a series configuration. And we know that in a series configuration, the resistances can be added. So we could set up the following equation to represent that idea. Now what we do is after adding the resistances together, we get one overall equivalent resistor. Now it turns out that we can find the value of REQ because the question gives us the EMF of the battery, which is six volts. It also gives us the current that's flowing through the circuit when the switch is in the open position, which is what we are analyzing currently. And that current is one milliamp. And from Ohm's law, we know that delta V is equal to I times R. We can apply this equation to this simplified circuit to find the resistance. We'll divide both sides by I. And then we will plug in the known value of delta V, which again is 6 volts, and the known value of I, which is 1 milliamp. We have to convert that to amps by multiplying by 10 to the minus 3. And when you simplify that, you should get... 6,000 ohms. So that's going to be the resistance of this equivalent resistor in our simplified circuit. So that means we can substitute a value of 6,000 in here for our EQ. Now this equation we're going to hold on to and refer to later on in the problem. We are next going to take the switch and close it in position A. So you can imagine this little switch right here connecting itself over to point A. And when that is done, it turns out that all four of the resistors are participating in the circuit. And that's because we have one continuous loop that goes like this. And actually, if this blue line would represent current, the current would have to split. Some of it would have to go this way, and some of it would have to go that way. They would travel through their respective R2s and rejoin here, and then flow again onto the end of the circuit. The point is that all resistors are participating now. And although it might be challenging to see this, it turns out that the R2s are in parallel with one another. So we could redraw the circuit in this fashion. Note again, the R2s are in parallel. We can combine those R2s using the parallel resistor equation in which we use a reciprocal arrangement of the resistances. Now, on the right side, since there is a common denominator of R2 already, we can add the numerators together, and we get 2 over the common denominator of R2. We're going to invert both fractions, so we're going to flip this around and flip this around. That's a neat algebraic trick you can use whenever you have a single fraction on the left side and a single fraction on the right side. So let's flip these upside down, and we get R2 divided by 2. So that means that these two resistors can be combined into a single equivalent resistor, whose resistance is R2 over 2. And now all three of these resistors would be in series, so we can add them together. And after doing that, again, just like before, we can lump them into a single resistor. Note the resistance is REQ, and now we can use Ohm's law again, in which the equivalent resistance is equal to the potential divided by the current. Now it's the same battery, so the potential hasn't changed. It's still 6 volts, but this time the current is different. It is mentioned to be 1.2 milliamps, so we'll plug in those values. Note again that we converted the 1.2 milliamps to amps by multiplying by 10 to the minus 3. When we simplify this, we get 5,000 ohms. So that means that we can plug in 5,000 for this REQ. And this is another equation that we're going to want to hold on to and refer to soon. Next, we're going to take the switch and connect it to point B. When we do that, we're going to see that only this resistor and this resistor are in the circuit. Let's try to follow along here to make sure that that makes sense. So the current would flow from the battery. It would turn here and continue its way through the circuit. It would encounter this R2 right here, as well as this R1 here, 
and then return to complete the circuit. If you're wondering why R3 isn't included there, it's because, and it's a little bit technical, but technically, in order for the current to flow through this direction, where R3 is situated, there would have to be a potential difference. But we'll see that on this side of the circuit and on this side of the circuit, there are no terminals of the battery. In other words, there's no positive terminal over here and no negative terminal here. And because of that, because there is no potential difference, the current will not flow through R3. So the resulting circuit, again, will only contain R1 and R2. They are in series, so we know that their equivalent resistance would just be calculated by adding them together. And we've condensed them into a single resistance. And now, to get the REQ, as before, we're going to plug in the potential difference of the battery divided by the current in this situation, and the current here is now 2 milliamps. Again, we converted the 2 milliamps into amps by multiplying by 10 to the minus 3. When you simplify that, you should get 3,000 ohms for that resistance. So we can actually plug 3,000 in for this REQ. And now, mercifully, the rest is algebra. So we're going to notice that, according to this equation, R1 plus R2 is equal to 3,000. Well, if we look over at the first equation we generated, we have R1 plus R2 right there. So we can replace this with 3,000. And then we could easily solve for R3 now by subtracting 3,000 from both sides of the equation. So we can see that R3 is equal to 3,000 ohms. So we have 1 out of the 3. Now, let's next take these two equations and stack them on top of each other. We're going to move the bottom equation up to the top, and we'll see why in just a moment. Now, there's a little algebraic trick that we can do here. We can subtract the two equations now that they're stacked on top of each other. So 6,000 minus 5,000 gives us 1,000. The R1 minus this R1 would cancel. Similarly, this R3 minus this R3 would cancel. And so all we would have left is this 1R2 minus half of an R2. Hopefully we can see that coefficient of 1 half. Well, 1 R2 minus half of an R2 is going to give us 1 half R2. And then if we multiply both sides of this equation by 2, we would get 2,000 equal to the value of R2. So now we only have to find R1. That's going to be real easy now because we have the value of R2. We just found it. And then R3 was 3,000. So let's plug those into this first equation. Of course, these would simplify to 5,000, and then you could subtract 5,000 from both sides, and you would get 1,000 ohms is equal to R1. And there are all three resistances. If for some reason your homework system wants them in kiloohms, then you would have to divide each one by 1,000. So for example, R1 would just become 1 kiloohm, R2 would become 2 kiloohms, and R3 would become 3 kiloohms. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.